Innovation is a business incubator and accelerator that provides specialized product and business development support to startups. Our incubation program assists startups to accelerate their technologies from proof of concept to minimum viable product stage, as well as to validate their business models. One of the startups currently in the portfolio developed patented semiconductor technology that will enable the mass rollout of 5G technology. Yet another startup in the incubator developed a medicine collection platform. This platform enables healthcare facilities to avoid congestion, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Text Innovation also has a seed fund through which we do strategic investments into startups in the incubator. Texnovation was established in partnership with the University of Pretoria and the Small Enterprise Development Agency, an agency of the Department of Small Business Development in South Africa. Texnovation has also partnered with the Technology Innovation Agency to jointly invest into startups in the incubator. We also have a number of corporate partners, including AFGRI, Adams & Adams, Kish IP and SolidWorks. Texnovation has recently partnered with the French Embassy in South Africa, as well as IMT, a leading engineering school in France. This part partnership will enable us to launch a novel program, namely the France South Africa program. Our programs enable startups to create new and sustainable enterprises with both social and economic impact in Africa. Texnovation aims to grow and foster the South African startup ecosystem through strategic partnerships both locally and internationally. The French Embassy in South Africa will financially support the France South Africa program. This program will enable French startups to enter the African market by spending three months in tax innovation. We believe that this program will provide unique opportunities and we look forward to bringing on board more partners into this program. Deputy Director General, International Cooperation and Resources, uh, Department of Science and Innovation, the Vice-Chancellor and Principal of the University of Pretoria, His Excellency, Monsieur Aurelien Le Chevalier, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To our colleagues joining us from France, bonjour, bienvenue au last mot de la coopération entre l'Afrique de Sud et la France, les universités de Pretoria et les instituts Main Telecom. We do hope to meet you in person in the near future when the time is right. It is a great honor for me to be the product, program director for this previous, for this prestigious event. My name is Leaho Takalani. Today marks a significant day for the joint cooperation of the University of Pretoria, particularly Tech Innovation and the French Institute, Min Telecom, as well as industry. 
Our program today is quite packed and we do apologize for the late start. We know that there's time pressures at this point. Without wasting any further time, I wish to hand over to Prof. Sunil Maharaj, the chairperson of the Tax Innovation Board, to welcome our guests. After him, it will be Dr. Patrick Duvaux, who will be joining us from France, to also welcome our guests as well. Professor Sunil Maharaj, over to you. Are you ready? Good afternoon, Program Director. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to our dignitaries, His Excellency the French Ambassador in South Africa, our Vice Chancellor and Principal Professor Coupe, um, our DDG from DSI. Um, good afternoon and bonjour and welcome to everybody and thank you for this wonderful occasion. On behalf of uh, Tax Innovation as the Chair of the Board, um, and certainly uh, also the Dean for the Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Information Technology. I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to this event. It's a great uh, and um, August event for us because having started this um, non-profit company, which is fully owned by the University of Pretoria, the University of Pretoria being the only shareholder in this non-profit company, which we started in 2017, it's just about five years uh, in inception. So it's a pretty young, fledgling um, innovation at the University of Pretoria. And certainly giving this opportunity to our incubators to be able to soft land their ideas and products globally and in France in this case, and also giving the reciprocity of our French colleagues the opportunity in South Africa. For us, it's a great milestone in terms of working together uh, to take this whole concept uh, of partnering, globalizing, and of course, innovating at a different level. And for that, we are very, very thankful and also giving our young incubators, particularly our students at University of Pretoria, this great opportunity, which they otherwise would not have. And we're very privileged um, for that. And certainly on behalf of my members on the board for their sterling effort, I'd like to thank uh, the university, um, DSI, uh, and of course, Tia through that, and of course, um, the French ambassador and the team at IMT for working with us and having trust in working with us at University of Pretoria. And we look forward to this great partnership uh, and growing that and scaling it and going further. And thank you very much, Program Director, for your time and effort. And I wish everybody well in today's uh, event and function. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Prof. Maharaj. Uh, now I will hand over to Dr. Patrick Duvaux, the Director of Innovation at IMT Group. Dr. Patrick, s'il vous plaît. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Takalani, and uh, also thank you, uh, Professor Maharaj. Thank you for both of you for your very nice uh, French words. Uh, hello and uh, welcome to all the, the dignities. Uh, that are gathered uh, today for uh, this uh, uh, very important event for uh, both of our countries and both of our institutions, uh, the French ambassador and the vice uh, chancellor. It's a really uh, a great honor uh, for us, for IMT, and uh, uh, I shall say that on the behalf uh, of uh, its uh, uh, CEO, uh, Odile Gauthier, uh, that uh, it's a unique opportunity for us as uh, the number one uh, network of incubators in France uh, with uh, several uh, stages of uh, acceleration uh, between uh, ideation and the market to be able today uh, via this uh, partnership uh, with Tax Innovation to add actually another booster uh, in the way uh, we take care of our startup in France and uh, this uh, missing uh, piece of our program was of course uh, the possibility for a startup to go overseas and to open an uh, international market uh, through uh, probably uh, the most prestigious and the most efficient hub uh, in, in, in all Africa, which is uh, of course University of Pretoria and Tux Innovation 
since as we discussed together already a couple of times, uh, the idea to access this international market is uh, to leverage uh, South Africa as a, as a unique hub. So we are very, very happy and uh, we are looking forward uh, to uh, uh, deliver uh, concrete uh, results and uh, economic growth uh, for both, both countries and both our startups. So again, it's a great honor and we are very, very happy actually uh, to launch today together uh, this uh, cross acceleration program. I give you back uh, the floor. Thank you, Dr. Dufo. Next on our program, uh, it is a great honor for me to welcome His Excellency, Monsieur Aurelion Le Chevalier. As the keynote address we expect to receive from him, I wish to say that I noted from the papers that it was a very busy week for you, uh, Ambassador, because I know in this week you bestowed upon some of our excellent men and women of this country the award of the Knight of Legion Award uh, to our former public protector as well as the Knight in Order of Arts and Letters to one of our great literature writers in this country. Merci beaucoup for making the time in your busy schedule. Thank you very much, Program Director. Good, good afternoon to everybody. It was very important for me and for us to be uh, with you today. It's a great, great pleasure. It feels that our relations and our partnership with the uh, University of Pretoria is, is growing on a daily basis. So this is fantastic news, uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor and Principal. Uh, dear, dear Professor Coupe, um, Deputy Director General Dan Dutois, thank you very much for always being with us uh, as well to represent uh, the Department for Science and Innovation on all our endeavors. And you know how keen we are and how determined we are on strengthening uh, the scientific research and innovation relations between uh, South Africa and, and France. And uh, thank you to, to all of you to welcome us and uh, hello to all the ones participating virtually either in South Africa or in uh, France. The University of Pretoria have been working with uh, Institut Min Telecom for some time, uh, quite some time in the, the fields of uh, engineering, uh, research and development. So I think today is uh, a new step uh, but based on a long-lasting uh, history and uh, an already a quite strong heritage. But it's really a new page that we are writing because now we turn to the field of innovation. And uh, I'm so, so glad and happy that uh, it takes place here with uh, our dear Professor Schekenbau at the Future Africa campus uh, because uh, I actually, I think what we have in mind is not only to uh, foster a partnership between two institutions, it's really to look together towards the same direction that is the African continent. And um, to do that, we need to uh, push our scientific cooperation, but also to work with the private sector and to help our startups, our entrepreneurs, our new companies to develop ties and to work together in South Africa, in France, in Europe to uh, succeed in their efforts all over the world and especially in the African continent. And I'm also very glad today because I think that uh, we mutually chose very well the partners that are around the table. Uh, EMT, Institut Min Telecom, has a very long and sound history in France. It's a prestigious, very well-known uh, university with several campuses, with different, uh, with a, a strong presence all over France and also a large number of partnerships all over the world. And I think that for University of Pretoria and Tusk's uh, innovation, it will be a great advantage to work with such uh, a global 
partner. And uh, they have now IMT, I think more than uh, 11 incubators, active incubators. Uh, so it's really a strong investment by them to make sure that this connection between the scientific community and the business people and the bus business opportunities is really uh, supported through uh, newcomers, through new companies, through entrepreneurs all, all around uh, France and, and beyond. And uh, Tux, I mean, has been a very impressive actor as well. Uh, I think now with the new leadership at the University of Pretoria and at Tux, uh, there is this idea to really uh, strengthen as well the investment in terms of uh, innovation across uh, a very large variety of, of topics, not only uh, in engineering, uh, robotics, uh, uh, computer science, but really across the board. And uh, I think that it's, uh, it's really a shared objective, a shared common ground that now we will try to uh, accompany as uh, the representatives of uh, France. The French Embassy has been involved from the start. Uh, last year, especially, we supported a, a mission from South Africa to visit France and to really go into the nitty-gritty details of this partnership. We have known some delay because of the COVID crisis, but not that much. And I, I, we, we've seen a lot of determination, uh, a lot of willingness to, to move forward, and I think now it's ripe enough. Everybody is uh, ready to, uh, to, to move forward, and we are so happy from the French Embassy uh, point of view to um, officialize today and to confirm that we will also financially support this new cross-acceleration program uh, with a budget. Uh, at least we have a budget for this year. I really hope that uh, in the years to come we will confirm this uh, financial commitment because we would like really this partnership to become tangible with uh, visits from South Africa to France and from Af uh, France to South Africa to make sure that the first startups will really work together and uh, create the, the best possible conditions for this cross acceleration program to, uh, to succeed. So again, thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you for the honor. Thank you for the beautiful venue and for all the arrangement for this hybrid event. And uh, it's a, a new beginning uh, for this partnership between IMT and, and, and UP. And we will be uh, at your side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Indeed, they say the startups of today are the multinationals of tomorrow. And what better way to craft that journey by cooperating between two institutions across different oceans in a journey towards making a difference for Africa and the globe at large. Thank you, Ambassador, for affirming our friendship between the countries. Okay. Next, I would like to welcome our Professor Tawana Kupe, the Vice Chancellor and Principal of University of Pretoria. He has been very instrumental in supporting tax innovation as the board, part of the board, we are part of implementing the strategy towards helping startups. And it's always a pleasure to listen to you, Professor Kupe. Please. Thank you. Very good afternoon to everybody who's in the room and also those who are joining us virtually. Thank you, Program Director, for your kind words. Uh, I'd like to welcome, of course, His Excellency, Mr. Oriellen Lechevalia, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Embassy of France. Uh, we consider the Embassy of France uh, one of our friends. 
I don't want to cause a diplomatic uh, incident because I live in the middle of a diplomatic zone and all of the ambassadors consider themselves my friend. So if I hear that I said you are a special friend, there could be a diplomatic uh, incident. <laughs> but uh, they are friends and they are friends. <laughs> so also at a personal level, I'm very grateful to the ambassador because my daughter was four years old who assists me with the French uh, goes to the school that the ambassador runs, which is opposite his residence. One, my younger son also did French, but not at your school, at the British school. Can you believe it? They taught better French, I think. No, I'm joking. He learned uh, less West French. So thank you for that. I'd also want to welcome Mr. Emmanuel Suquet, Deputy Head of Mission, Mr. Matteo Becou from the French Embassy, Mr. Dan Dotoy from the, the Deputy Director General, International Cooperation and Resources from South Africa's Department of Science and Innovation. Then Ms. Ms. Odile Gauthier, Executive Director of the Institute, Mains Telecom, Dr. Anton Botha, Interim Center Manager for Tax Innovation and his team, and of course, Professor Sunil Maharaj, Dean of uh, our Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment, Professor Patrick Duval, who also addressed us now. And of course, all of the virtual audience that is not in the room. As the ambassador correctly said, the future is hybrid. So people should never think of only the audience they can see. Now there are multiple audiences located in many different parts of the world, and that is the pleasure of doing this. I'd like at the outset also to say that partnerships and collaborations are part of the DNA of UP. We value this very much. And so this is very much a partnership and collaboration event. And only through partnership and collaborations are you able to transcend borders and boundaries both geographic borders and boundaries, but also borders and boundaries in relation to ideas, especially in the space of innovation uh, and, and, and creativity. Also, I also want to say that I'm very excited by the opportunities this partnership promises. So we have two highly uh, reputable, compatible institutions, Investor Pretoria's Technology, Business Incubator, Tax Innovation, of which I'm extremely proud, when I travel abroad, everybody hears about tax innovation, among other things. Of course, everybody hears about future Africa. So normally they have to limit my time because, uh, and the French based public institution, Institute Means Telecom, IMT, coming together in a cross acceleration exchange to support technology startups from each country and cooperate in addressing the major challenges of the 21st century and of course the, the fourth industrial revolution, including transformation in te digital technology, industry, energy, and education. As partners, we are well known to each other. The ambassador made that point, several other speakers before made that point, as we have a long-standing collaboration between UP and IMT Lil Dwao, a school of the IM IMT. This new dimension of the partnership expands on the opportunities for cooperation between our two countries and continents, crossing borders and boundaries, as I said, in support of the growing trend of small businesses, business, small business global entrepreneurship. This collaboration came about, as some of you will know, as a result of the agreement between UP, IMT, and Mr. Matteo Becou, the attaché for innovation at the French Embassy in South Africa. Thank you for that, which promotes the development of technology startups and is co-funding the project through the Service for Cooperation and Cultural Action. We deeply thank the French Embassy for this. Entrepreneurship in higher education is now widely recognized as being as important as postgraduate studies and a major driver of innovation. UP aspires to high achievement in the Triangle Alliance of Critical Knowledge and Critical Thinking, Innovation and, in, and Entrepreneurship. Our work through tax innovation leverages innovative thinking and personifies the spirit of new energies for new times. We train our students to be ready for the current and the future world of work. In about a month's time, you will notice that we are going to launch a center for the study of work. And Professor Alex Antonitis has been instrumental in, in drafting part of the blueprint. We will announce it um, shortly after we will host a um, Five Nobel 
five or six Nobel Prize winners, five are confirmed, one is yet to compare. In the first ever Nobel Dialogues to be held on the African continent. I'm quite sure, Mr. Ambassador, your invitation arrived today or has already arrived. <laughs> so if it isn't, I'll chase it up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So these Nobel Prize winners, I chose the topic, the future of work. You cannot talk about the future of work without talking about innovation and entrepreneurship and critical thinking. Now, the research and development exposure that our students gain, particularly in postgraduate studies, coupled with the knowledge of how to create, grow, and sustain a business, equips them to enter the market as startup or small business owners. This is also a catalyst for becoming an entrepreneurial university. I know that this date was, not cho was chosen uh, without consideration for what happened yesterday. So what happened yesterday is that one of the major university rankings, the Times Higher Education, released its impact rankings. And UP is number one in South Africa and on the continent in two, uh, in two SDG, the impact rankings measure, measure performance against the SDGs. So we were, were, were in the band 101 to 200 for, you know what, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And that is, a, that is a great achievement. Then the other SDG where we were number one in South Africa as well and on the continent is life on land. Now you must say life on land has nothing to do with innovation. Wrong. You would fail your exam if I was your professor. Life on land, especially when it comes to agriculture, biodiversity, ecosystems, is very much technology and innovation driven. So one of the things I would like to inform our, our partners here is that on this land that you see here is rising another big institute called Innovation, Innovation Africa at UP. So in five to six years when you come here, the cows will be gone. No, we won't eat them and have a bride. They are going to another farm that we own. But in that space of the farm, there will be high-tech agricultural innovative uh, 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 enterprises, R&D, outfits, and all of that, uh, representing a partnership between the private sector, uh, including small farmers, who are also small business people, by the way. People should uh, understand also farming is as is, is important as manufacturing. And, and so that is also what is going to happen here. So as you know, uh, Prof Maharaj will tell you, just directly a kilometer from here is Engineering 4.0. Now, Engineering 4.0 is the ultimate in technology innovation. So I would like IMT, French Embassy, and others to come for a visit to Engineering 4.0. And we are in our phase one is innovation in the transport and mobility space. So you can imagine then what is going to happen in this space. You're going to have Future Africa, which is already here. You're going to have Innovation Africa at UP. Engineering 4.0 is phase one. Now we are on to phase two. And then we're also going to, we also have a, something else across the road in Hetfield, the Java UP Art Center, which is busy digitizing and also going the innovation way. So then also next door, you have um, the CSIR, you have the Innovation Hub, you have uh, the Department of Science and Innovation. So this is going to be the most innovative square mile in Africa, not the, you know, the most, the richest square mile in Africa, which is in Johannesburg, which is a city about money, not innovation. So uh, I, I partly joke about that, but that is what is going to happen here. Add to these four factors that are central to tax innovation, IMT exchange. The power of intercontinental collaboration in small business creation effectively the internationalization of small business. The value of being exposed to potential partners and clients in international markets, in this case, with an emphasis on African and European markets. The opportunity to participate in an eight month incubation, virtual for now, but when possible to travel to the respective incubators in France and South Africa for two months of this period. Then fourth, the opportunity to validate the startup model in an international market to assess product market fit before committing to move into that market. You now, all of those are very important value chains. The impact this, this is on the potential to scale and accelerate the business maturation of startups and small businesses is inestimable. 
knowing market dynamics, cultural preferences, client behavior, and expectations can only be re realized by being exposed to each market. Partners in the form of suppliers or extended services are critical to entering these markets, as you would know. While the internationalization of large corporates or multinationals is long established, the linking of small businesses to international value chains and markets is far more a nascent trend or a very recent trend, if you like, but one that has gained impetus over the last 12 years, spared by the economic crisis in 2008, where local markets became too unstable to sustain a local focus only. Small businesses also often take too, too long to develop sufficient economies of scale it, if they stay focused on local markets. In these highly turbulent and unpredictable times, we are compelled to boost our businesses and economies beyond geographic boundaries. As you know, I mean, it's not just COVID. People like to blame it on COVID. I know we all should hate the coronavirus, right? But it didn't create all of our problems. Some of these problems predated what simply COVID has done is to exacerbate existing situations. But because this is not, uh, in a sense, depress us, because this is a huge opportunity, actually, to reflect not only on the current crisis, but also to reflect on the crisis that predate the coronavirus, and then to see your way through. We need to create a new generation of startups and small businesses that are not confined by boundaries, that instead focus on solutions to the global problems of our times, as pres prescribed by the Sustainable Development Goals. This incubation and acceleration partnership will contribute to this. During the Cross Acceleration Exchange, the first group is being onboarded next month. So this is actually, as, as the ambassador also said, we are gaining, if you like, momentum and speed in this uh, partnership, because also often people drag things too much. The entrepreneurs will receive assistance in operationalizing the partner and client agreements for their startups and hopefully launch them by the final business acceleration stage. We must set ourselves those kinds of targets. The program's emphasis is on both sustainability and resilience in establishing a solid foundation to remain in business and have the adaptability to regenerate when changing circumstances demand. I mean, the coronavirus or the pandemic has taught us that resilience is almost everything and ability to be flexible and adaptable have become very valued uh, 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 attributes. Although financial markets are often interdependent, geographical or seasonal difference in markets provide a resilience that is not available when only a local market is focused on. South African markets are relatively small and do not change as fast as some international markets. The dynamic development of demand provides more opportunity for innovation and growth. To give you a UP example, the, a tech startup called Multifractal Semiconductors, led by Joe Valian Ranpath, is a resident in the tax innovation incubation, incubation space. It develops low cost, fully integrated E band and RF front ends in order to enable 5G in a variety of uses. The technology was developed by UP's Cal. Carl Emily Fuchs Institute for Microelectronics by Dr. Piotr Osach and Nish Singh and can enable the rollout of 5G at a fraction of the cost compared to existing technologies. This startup has secured 22 million rand in in-kind investment from a Silicon Valley-based incubator and has also raised funding from the Technology Innovation Agency in South Africa. Tax innovation is assisting with investment readiness, intellectual property, legal advisory, fundraising, and branding. This innovation has the potential to achieve global reach and is a strong example of the role of university incubators can play in global entrepreneurship. In synopsis, startup or small business incubation in higher education institutions can enable a new form of internationalization that provides huge potential for international collab cooperation, collaboration, and partnerships at every level. A world of opportunity is open for our universities in this borderless environment, and this has been table charged 
by digitalization. UP Strong is supposed the internationalization of knowledge, innovation, and global engagement. About 44% of our research, of the research we conduct is done with international collaborators. So for us, this is not new, but what is new, if you like, is that we want to scale up that uh, to much higher levels. The massive ad advantage of collaboration is that it enables universities to take giant research and innovation leaps by building on each other's areas of expertise. In, in, in this case, to leverage international opportunities in the marketplace. Uh, I could go on ar around like, uh, for this because this is a very exciting topic. I also happened to go to school to, in, in Cuba to be taught public speaking by Professor Fidel Castro. I was one of his leading alumni. But when he died and they read his will, he said, stop talking for too long and sit down. Thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you, Professor Cooper. It's always inspirational to hear you speak. On that note, I was quite uh, amazed that small businesses contribute to 60% of employment opportunities in our country. So therefore, can you imagine if we scale those startups and small businesses, how that 60% can leapfrog to something much bigger? And uh, Professor Cooper talking about awards, I wish to challenge His Excellency that I read that the uh, Knight of Legion Award also covers scientific research, startups. So I hope next time when we meet, you have a spare medal in your suitcase, they will be awarding some of these startups that award for the impact they make. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, now I wish to welcome the next speaker. Uh, from the Department of Science and Innovation. The first time I met uh, Deputy Director General Mr. Dante Deut was in Belgium 10 years ago. Uh, we were on a mission to the European Commission to talk about technology and look at other options of cooperation between South Africa and the European Commission on Technology. The lasting impression I have of Mr. Dante Deut is that he is an engineering diplomat. He always finds a way to find the politicians and the engineers to talk the same language. And I'm really pleased to welcome you on stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, for, for that kind introduction, which indeed to some extent anticipate what I'm going to say. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My first task as representative of the South African government is to bring to all of you, those gathered here in Chwane and those connecting remotely, the very good wishes of my minister, His Excellency Dr. Blayton Zimandi, South Africa's Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. The minister very closely follows collaboration of this kind and was absolutely delighted with the progress achieved between EMT and the University of Pretoria and extends his congratulations uh, to you. Uh, I would first of all like to acknowledge and congratulate uh, Professor Kipe for the outstanding leadership he continues to provide to ensure that the University of Pretoria remains not only one of South Africa, but of Africa's leading universities, and indeed, as was attested by the Times Higher Education rankings, a university with global impact. So Professor Kupe, thank you very much. Thank you very much for ensuring that the University of Pretoria continues to be an integral and very strategic part of the South African system of innovation. And of course, I should acknowledge my friend and our host today, uh, Professor Sheikh Mambao, the director of Future Africa. I think we often marvel at the facilities here, the hardware, but we should equally appreciate the software what's actually happening as part of Future Africa. Uh, we have now started an initiative at the Department of Science and Innovation to really profile the city of Chwane for the reasons Professor Kupia has mentioned as the science diplomacy capital of Africa. And Future Africa, I really think, has all the attributes to be one of the hubs of that science diplomacy capital. And of course, I should acknowledge uh, uh, Ambassador Le Chevalier. Ambassador, when I reflected on what I could say this afternoon, I was a bit worried because I was wondering what could I possibly say which is new, which the ambassador hasn't heard before. Because I have the impression every week we are somewhere speaking together. And, and that is really absolutely a, a, a huge, I think, tribute and testimony to the outstanding work you are doing in South Africa. 
Um, I very much find myself in the same predicament as Professor Kipe, where I meet with many ambassadors, participate in many events, and often speak about a special and strategic relationship between South Africa and country X, Y, and Z. But indeed, Professor Kipe, um, they are, I'll say it in French that no one knows. Certainement, il y a des amis qui sont plus importants que les autres amis. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, very briefly, uh, three key reasons why it was, I think, very important for us as the department and the government to be represented here and why we view this cooperation as so important. First of all, because very concretely, it serves to bolster innovation in South Africa. Secondly, it reinforces uh, a very strategic partnership with France. And then thirdly, and this is the program director and I didn't consult, I think it's a good example, excellent example of what the buzzwords like to refer to as science or engineering or innovation diplomacy. Um, first of all, at, at the department and, and indeed in our government, we are in a very crucial phase now of policy formulation for the next 10 years of science, technology and innovation in South Africa. Three weeks ago, our government approved the first draft of the new decadal plan for science, technology and innovation in South Africa. And this is going to very much set the policy, the strategic and the funding direction for science and innovation in South Africa. And all the elements of the program which is being launched today find expression in, 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 in that plan. Uh, that plan is all about strengthening and bolster the innovation ecosystem. And SMEs, entrepreneurship, include, including those enabled by inc um, incubation and accelerator programs is a very crucial part of building that e ecosystem. But secondly, it also seeks to do something which has been an ongoing effort, not only in South Africa, but in, across the world. And that is how do we translate these excellent research outputs, the, the achievements we see in terms of citation impacts into new products and, 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 and services. That, that is, a, a, is, is a key mission for South Africa in the next 10 years. We know we are punching above our weight on the global science stage, but we have work to do in terms of translating that into real inno innovation impact. And of course, we can only be delighted to, to, to partner with uh, strategic uh, institutions such as EMT. And if, if we look at the potential focus areas of this collaboration, they all perfectly align with our government's economic reconstruction and recovery plan, which is the plan our president has launched in response to COVID-19. Reinforcing the digital economy, reinforcing the green economy, supporting innovation and entrepreneurships, they are all key policy priorities for, for South Africa. But secondly, this is just another element, which as I've said, reinforces a very strategic partnership with France. There's long-standing political, economic and cultural relations. I think it's almost symbolic that on today, Earth Day, our presidents, President Ramaphosa and President Macron, are both participating in the, uh, the climate, uh, global climate, climate summit. I mean, that commitment to multilateralism, to global solidarity, is, is, is certainly one of the key elements which, which brings South Africa and, 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 and France together. But we also have an extensive science, technology, and innovation partnership. Uh, uh, it relates to human resource development. There's the, just last week, the ambassador and I participated in a, in a meeting launching the next round of South African students who will benefit very generously from bursaries um, from the French government. Um, there's joint collaborative research. We are very privileged that uh, French institutions such as CNRS, IRD, and CIRAT have representative offices here in South Africa. Uh, and indeed, the, the French embassy have a considerable arsenal of human and other uh, resources to support uh, our collaboration. Also very importantly, I should always mention that because that's a flagship um, program for, for South Africa. The French government has now agreed to join the Global Square Kilometer Array Partnership, uh, which is the, the program to build uh, the, the, the world's largest radio telescope in South Africa. But then this program through the outstanding work, and I would really like to salute uh, and express our appreciation to Matthew Bouquet, the innovation attaché, really adds a very important component, that innovation angle to our, to our collaboration. Um, as I've said, we have many international partnerships, but there are very few which are so comprehensive in scope as our collaboration with, with France and which have such a very specific and determined focus on the innovation angle. And that is certainly in no small measure due to the work Mathieu has been doing uh, in, 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 in South Africa. Mathieu, we are very, very grateful for, for your efforts and um, would, I would like to underline that uh, appreciation. But, but then just to conclude, as I've said, it's one of the policy buzzwords, no matter where you go, 
you will find people speak about science and, and innovation diplomacy. And I think what we are doing today put actually that buzzwords in practice. Because, because first of all, of course, you need diplomacy, international cooperation, to enable collaboration in science and innovation. Because we all know that science and innovation progresses when we share experience, when we share uh, expertise, when we learn from each other, when we make joint investments. And it's this international cooperation, diplomatic instruments, which enables this very important collaboration. But also science and innovation is increasingly an integral part of the international diplomatic agenda. I just I refer to, to um, climate change, but whether it's energy security, public health, COVID-19, food security, uh, the fight against inequality and global poverty, that all requires the decisive contribution from, from science, science and innovation. And it's, it's also the collaboration as the one we are launching here today, which will bring our entrepreneurs, our startups together, which will make that contribution for unleashing the potential of innovation to contribute to global challenges. But then the, the last, and this is where I was very worried because I always end with this message and ambassadors probably heard it 10, 10 times before, the potential of science and innovation as we spoke about there being no borders, we're all together, whether we're in Lille or whether we, we're in Pretoria, um, science and innovation knows no borders and it has that very unique ability to bring people together and countries together, irrespective of our linguistic, cultural, backgrounds, uh, pol pol political orientation, and we all, I think, can agree that our world needs much more solidarity and not less solidarity. So we are also excited about the, perhaps the most important investment even this program will be, will be to invest in young South African and French experts, our future leaders, bringing them together and building global understanding and friendship. So with those few words, I would just like to again emphasize our full support for this initiative. We will follow it very closely and look forward to see where we can support it. Thank you very much. Danny Detroit, you remind me of another diplomat from Africa that went to the UN, the late Mr. Kofi Annan. His words, he once said, um, there is no better tool for development that is more effective than the empowerment of women. One of the SDG objectives is to promote equality and what better way to do it than to put women as part of the journey of building any economy and startups. On that note, I wish to welcome Madame Odile Gauthier, who is the executive director for IMT. And I wish to say to uh, Dr. Patrick Duvaux, that felicitation, you have a woman in your organization. I'm truly proud of that. On that note, please can we stream the video of uh, Madame Gauthier? Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here today with you online. What is Institut Min Telecom? Institut Min Telecom is the number one public French group of engineering and management graduate schools in France. We have 10 graduate schools scattered across French territories and 13,500 students, supervised by the French Ministry of Finance and Economy. IMG aims at four major objectives. Training both at graduate, postgraduate, and PhD level students that will be business oriented, both in hard and soft skills. Unlocking the keys of future technology with top level research, contributing to economic growth with a focus on local territories and companies, and fostering innovation and entrepreneurship. Several key differentiators and figures make IMT unique in France and Europe. We are multidisciplinary at the crossword of three shifting transformation, digital, industrial, and environmental. We have a world-class research with 1,800 A plus publication per year and more than 1,000 PhD students. We have outcome-driven partnerships with a lot of companies, big companies, small companies, worth up to 70 million euros per year 
which is around 20% of our budget. And finally, cutting edge discoveries are important for us and we have around 50 patents filed per year. Institut Min Telecom has an international DNA. Campuses are multicultural and more than 30% of our students are international. Curricula enable students to connect with top level international professors and to have significant international experiences. EMT aims to be a prominent player in African growth and to contribute particularly to digital transformation in Africa. We are present in Africa through several partnerships in Côte d'Ivoire with Polytechnic National Institute, in Burkina Faso, in Senegal with a bachelor degree with a management school and an EduLab for advanced training methods, and last but not least in South Africa with University of Pretoria. Institut Min Telecom is a French champion in innovation and entrepreneurship. IMT is the first French incubators network with 11 sites across France, a stock of 170 companies and 80 new startups launched every year. We raise for our startups more than 100 million euros each year and our startups are boosted by our research and technology driven. We have a success rate of 87% after five years. Besides being highly selective, our incubators network success is based on seven boosters from ideation to market that startups are provided with for free. R&D proof, technology proof, soft skills needs, proof of concept, market evaluation, business plan and investment aspects, and scale up and internationalization. EMT Lille originated the collaboration between Institut Min Telecom and University of Pretoria. The partnership stems from a long-standing collaboration initiated in 2015 between Patrick Pizet at EMT Lindwe and Nico Walk at the University of Pretoria. This collaboration has fostered common research projects between the two researchers, in particular towards the development and experimental validation of granular material modeling using high-performance computing for industrial applications. In 2017, a MOU was signed between EMT Lille and the University of Pretoria, allowing student exchange and joint PhD degree programs. From this year, the collaboration around R&D is extended to innovation and entrepreneurship. It will now include the participation of all the incubators of IMT schools. I am confident that this will be a great opportunity for all our startups, both in France and in South Africa. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Madame Gauthier. Uh, now we will enter into the next uh, session of our engagements today, which is a panel discussion. And on that note, as per Madame Gutierrez's presentation, what I noted is the importance of the success of the startups, because it is one thing to start from idea and start a business, but the success rate of those businesses is what is the chasm between the scaling and the impact that we want to see. On that note, let us discuss today on the international cooperation, uh, the projects that we are building together, how they can accelerate, cross-accelerate uh, those startups. And I will now hand over to Dr. Rose Phillips for the panel discussion.
Um, yes, I will do that now. It can't be something I didn't say. <laughs> so our program director, thank you very much. Um, for this opportunity to speak here on behalf of the University of Pretoria and on behalf of um, the school in Santon, where the money is made, um, Gibbs, Gordon Institute of Business Science. Um, unfortunately, His Excellency has left, but um, Vice Chancellor Coupe, members of our IMT colleagues uh, from the University of Pretoria, distinguished guests, those in person, and of course, those joining us online. We've, we have less time, unfortunately, here in this panel then you would have to defend your doctorate. Um, so we're gonna have to go through this quite fast. But having said that, we do have an opportunity here in this session now to really have an intellectual debate, a debate really about the role of the university-based incubator. Um, and we can do that within the launch of a very practical application, which is this um, cross-acceleration exchange program. We're launching that in a sense, it's almost an incubator of an idea that really needs to take shape to allow our startups, both in South Africa and globally, to really take their place and help our economic development. As program director said, 60% of economic development sits with our small businesses and with our startups. Um, they are an integral part of the future of our continent, certainly, and the future of our world. And, and I hope that this debate that we will have now in the 30 minutes that's been afforded to us is not a debate that stops here, but it's a debate that continues a debate around how do we remove the friction that might sit in institutions like universities? How do we ensure that in the world where you need to be agile, you need to be fast, you need to deal with um, intellectual property quickly um, and not be left behind? How do you find the right vehicles that allow you to do that and stay, stay ahead of the game? And so with that in mind, the question that we are going to be debating is the university-based incubator specificities and main challenges. What role can these incubators play in the development of international cooperation projects? And I have joining me here on the stage, you've been sitting here for a while, sweating and smiling at everybody. Um, we have Dr. Anton Boeta. Thank you very much for being here, Acting Center Manager for Tux Innovation of UP. I will also use Tux Innovation multiple times, just like our VC has asked us to do. Um, Ms. Samantha Castle, thank you for being with us, Senior Manager Alumni Relations for UP, and of course, Professor Alex Antonides, Head of Department of Business Management, um, which is so important when you talk about technology, what about the human factor? What about business development knowledge? So, so thank you for joining us. We had one other gentleman gentleman that's supposed to join us. Unfortunately, looks like he's not able to join. Online, we have Dr. Online. John. Oh, are you online? Ah, fantastic. Well, yes. if you're online, then that must be Taban Kumsa, and he's the commercialization manager for the technology transfer office. There you are. Absolutely. Hello, Tabag. Technology Transfer Office for UP. Joining us also online, our French colleagues, we have Dr. Jean-Christophe Baudy, who is Research and Innovation Executive Director for IMT, Dr. Patrick Pizet, IMT Lil Dway, I think we call it, and Research Member of Future Africa Community. I think he's more an African than he is a Frenchman, having spent so much time on this continent already. And then, of course, the Honorable Dr. Patrick Devo, who is the Director for Innovation for the IMD Group. I, I do invite questions um, from the, the, and, and discussion from the audience. Um, and I note the presence of government in, in scientific community, small business community, other academic institutions, uh, our, our colleagues and, and international agencies. So I, I welcome you all. So let me kick off and, and, and Anton, if you don't mind, I'm going to, to dispel with the doctors and the professors and, and you know, I, I get a little bit lost. So if that is okay with you, I just wanna sort of give a bit of a background and just say that universities around the world are entering a new phase as we all know. And it's, a, it's kind of an inflection point I would imagine, right, an inflection point in the tertiary education journey that students undertake. And initially, as, as uh, Prof. Coupe had said, universities were about teaching and, and, and about learning, and then it became about research. 
and research intensity became the buzzword, but it doesn't matter how many research papers you produce, how important are those research papers if they are not applicable and if they don't give impact? And so now we have the so-called entrepreneurial university, um, which adds innovation, it's add entrepreneurship, and it adds business development. But the question is, what vehicles do you use to break from the tradition of the old mindset of the role of a university. And that's the, the notion of the university-based incubator. So, so, so Anton, you're the acting center manager of Tech, Tech Innovation, technology business incubator, technology business incubator of UP. And you say you exist for the startup to help them first and foremost, and then of course, to help them scale, mature, grow, amplify economic potential. So, so for you, what does a successful university-based incubator or accelerator of the future look like? I mean, how does it really deal with complexity, with uncertainty, with disruption, all these different business models that it needs to deal with? What's the role that it plays, um, given your, your role that you have? Thank you, Rose, and good afternoon, everyone here. And uh, we appreciate that all of you are here to come and listen to this and hopefully also advise us after we've uh, discussed this. When you look at the university-based incubator, it's probably the most favorable position you can be in mm. if you want to start new businesses. Because we are sitting on a wealth of potential talent that can go through the business pipeline, as we call it. Um, we just have to choose the right ones and we have to combine them in the, in the right way. But you talk about uncertainty, you talk about um, complexity and how difficult it has become out there to create business. The thing about an incubator in university, at least the way we do it in tax innovation, we see ourselves as a startup business that regenerates itself, renews itself all the time. And if you look at the future, we will have to make sure that we follow the dynamics in the market. So it's about flexibility. Uh, but it's also about the associations you have. Mm. It's generally easy and well known to have agreements with governments and to have a government university ecosystem for business creation and business support. Uh, the one we are still struggling with, I think, is the one where we can have an industry university um, ecosystem for business creation. And the one thing that we've identified is that you should try and bring companies in earlier in the whole evaluation, not evaluation, in the whole value chain of, uh, of business creation. And that means right there at the ideation. If at the ideation point you can actually bring the entrepreneur and the potential client together, you can shorten the, 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 the track, you can uh, step up the pace, and you can then try and avoid something which I call the uh, chasm of failure, the value of death, <laughs> is when somebody has got a beautiful product but they don't know how to get it into the market. And, and, and it's about not pushing your technology over that launch gap, but it's about pulling it in. So if the partnerships exist already, it's fine. The, the emphasis on technology-based incubation and then going through to, do you only look locally? Obviously, there are opportunities, and it's very good to focus on something that's close by. But the whole purpose of this is to understand that even a small, young startup is part of a global market. Yeah. And this is where we have to get it into, into future. It's you have to focus, and you have to bring together, um, in our case, the focus is technology-based. Mm. Some incubators focus on markets, but you have to bring together a whole cluster uh, of, of small businesses that build up a strength. And that is part of the future direction you can give as an incubator. But it, it, even though you say um, it's technology-based, which is really what Tux Innovation is about, it is really about accelerating the technologies, and especially the emerging ones, artificial intelligence, blockchain, um, internet of things, or the internet of everything nowadays. Mm. Um, but it is also about the markets, right? Because that is what the incubator is providing, is about the markets. And I, I keep talking about the role that universities play, the old mindset of what the role of university is. And I think when you talk about bringing industry in, I, I think that industry still suffers from that notion of the relationship 
that they have with universities, which is also a traditional one, right? A, a relationship of learning, a relationship of teaching, sure. maybe some relationships of research yeah. and development that takes two years yeah. to produce something and the world yeah. has moved on to something else already. Yeah. And you're now saying, we've now taken something a little bit outside of the university. It's very entrepreneurial. Yeah. It's there for the startup yeah. industry. Come and join us. And I think the, the, the uh, alignment there is that more and more companies are starting to look at being innovative themselves mm. and to do what we call corporate incubation or corporate acceleration. And if you can actually combine what university incubators have and what industry needs in terms of also incubation advice to industry and not only to startups and, and join them together, your chances for success are much higher. Absolutely, the whole is always greater than the sum of the parts. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Patrick Devo, if I could ask you to come in here, Director Innovation IMT, more than 20 years experience actually with international business, and I just want to latch on to what Anton is saying. Also holder of 67 patents, so maybe you can also support us here on the question I'm going to ask a little bit later about intellectual property, because I'm, very, I'm, I'm always very aware of can we be agile in a university? Because agile, agility, speed is important, disrupt or be disrupted. But I want to ask you a question with your experience of developed world entrepreneur, internationalization of entrepreneurs, um, and what you see in developing worlds. I mean, you've worked in Japan, you've worked in China, you've worked in India, you've worked in the US. Um, based on your experience with international entrepreneurship, collaboration elsewhere in the world, um, how can lasting relationships be between nations be built? Here's a classic example now between France and South Africa. What for you is success? Well, th thank you uh, for your very, very sharp question. Uh, even, it's a, even if it is a tough one, actually. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to start by saying that uh, uh, long-lasting uh, international partnership uh, based on innovation have never been so necessary. Uh, we, are, yeah, we are in the midst of the worst crisis what we have faced for decades and uh, we all know that each time to bounce back, leveraging innovation and entrepreneurship has always been uh, the right way, the right way actually uh, to, to get back. Uh, so we've, we believe uh, internationally that we have to rebalance the way we work to align our values uh, in order to, uh, for the benefit of all. So I, so, 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 so that, that's probably, uh, as a starting point, something very important to keep in mind. So, so, that, so therefore, uh, I, I believe, and it's not a magic bullet, but I believe that uh, a perennial and long-lasting uh, partnership based on innovation uh, should probably be based on, on three pillars. Uh, the, the, the first one, uh, to make it simple, is to align, more or less, the values and the goals of every stakeholders of this partnership to go beyond borders and to tackle with issues that are characterized by, by what I call the four Ps. And the four Ps are people, planet, prosperity, and participating government. So this means this partnership, they have to keep in their roots these four Ps if you really want to have something long lasting and something that tackle that goes beyond board. The second pillar is really to be able to build a, an ecosystem of innovation that, that what I call a reactor, a reactor of innovation. And a reactor of innovation has a core and the core of its reactor is usually based on startup. One startup is good, but several startups working together really are able, you cannot tackle that Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was saying that if you want to tackle a big issue worldwide, you will find one startup to do it, but it won't be enough. Hmm. You need a cluster of winning startups working together, and that's the core of the reactor of innovation, but it's still not enough. You need catalyst. You need a real catalyst. You need enablers to trigger resonance, the resonance of the working together, all these startups, 
and the key players that are the catalysts of this, this reactor are investors, they are companies, they are local assets, they are end users, and they are local government and, and local expectation, uh, human experience. So, so this is more or less a reactor of innovation and, and, and cross international partnership have a chance probably to last quite long if they build very, very resilient and ecosystem that address uh, big challenge based on the 4P. And, and the last pillar, the third one, and not the least, is to be able to uh, enable a decentralized access to the value that you create through this reactor and to convert all what people are sharing, all the, what the stakeholders are sharing into asset that you will enrich. And at the end of the day, you will be able that all stakeholders based on a win-win uh, more or less operation will, will get back their investment, which is return on investment. This means what you have to do when you build an innovation reactor, you have to assess every asset that every stakeholder put inside the innovation reactor. Second of all, you have to notarize it. Third of all, you have to value it, evaluation of it. And then you have to augment, of course, the value of this asset. And then you have to manage the risk. That's very important. When you put many startups working together in an innovation reactor with stakeholders, you have to make sure that every, each asset more or less is a, independent from the risk of the company. So you, you have to separate the value of the asset from the risk of the company. And that's also a key feature of a long lasting partnership that involved many stakeholders. And then you have the return on investment. So to summarize, again, probably one avenue to build long lasting partnership that goes beyond more or less the borders would be to build 4P partnership centered on people, on planet, on prosperity, and on uh, participating governance that foster innovation reactor, enabling decentralized, decentralized sorry, access of the value created by all these reactors. And at the heart of it, this means you have to consider that an innovation ecosystem is also an asset, asset ecosystem, and you have to, to make sure that these assets will be enriched and will benefit to all. And actually intellectual property, of course, will play a key role but it has more or less uh, to take a new form, which is a tokenized form of, of intellectual property. That's the most fluid way actually to share it and to have a fair return on trusted sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. I, I, um, it's always so difficult to stop someone that has been at this for over 20 years. You've got so much to, to impart for us. And I think that's also the beauty of having collaborations like this because the idea of the collaboration is not just a co competition where the best entrepreneur or the best startup goes overseas and goes on an exchange program. There's also the learning behind it or the learning that gets put into making that incubation work um, that comes from the experience that is shared between the likes of Tux Innovation and also other institutions, academic institutions in South Africa doing the same thing and, and the likes of, of IMT. Thank you, Patrick DeVoe. Um, it reminds me, IMT stands for All Together to Imagine and Build a Sustainable Future and to train key stakeholders who will build this future. And that's clearly what Patrick has really been sharing with us. Prof. Anthony Des, I want to turn to you now, um, talking about markets, talking about people, planet, prosperity, participatory governance, the ESGs, we're on Earth Day, we're talking about the technologies that we provide to startups, we're talking about the innovation ecosystems that get developed between various participants, in this particular case, France and South Africa. Um, an entrepreneur is someone that takes risk, it's, an, it's, it's somebody who is proactive, uh, knocks down doors, don't uh, experiment, doesn't stop. It's somebody who's innovative, who thinks laterally, who thinks creatively. 
But there's also more things to that than really what makes up a successful entrepreneur, a successful startup. So many of them don't even make it beyond the first few months, much less beyond the first year. So I want to ask you in an entrepreneurial university, how should multidisciplinary business development be promoted and supported, specifically in light of what we are doing here in terms of an incubation and a, and a cross acceleration program between two nations? Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Um, I think the modern uh, entrepreneurial university's business model asks for and requires um, an enhanced collaboration between uh, knowledge capital, like our research output, and, and also entrepreneurship capital, mm -hmm. which is continuously that, that, that aptitude to continuously or propensity seek new opportunities, new markets, and um, exploit them and add value to socioeconomic or have socioeconomic impact. It's also a, a model where, or university, where there's a rather seamless flow from knowledge creation to commercialization or innovation at the end. And that's complex, especially in public universities. It's a complex process because you need a very strong entrepreneurial mindset embedded in, in your organizational culture and your DNA, and also important, you need a, a very productive or efficient enabling space that hampers, that's, that's not hampering um, you know, the commercialization process by means of bureaucracy and so on. So easy flow from idea to market. And in the body of knowledge, in terms of this, I have to be a bit more academic. Um, in entrepreneurial university, it speaks about the three rings of the entrepreneurial university, the research, the teaching, and entrepreneurial activity that is applicable to individuals, the organization, and the environment, the system. And it's become very popular in the global HE. IMT is a very good example there. Now that brings me to your multidisciplinary question. Uh, answer there is, it all starts with individual mindset, cultivating individual entrepreneurial mindset. Entrepreneurship should be present in all disciplines, the awareness of that. Whether you study medicine or media studies or, or, or med, uh, engineering, it should be there. That's where we start because it flows into entrepreneurial orientation. It flows into intent and intent is something we can work with. It's an idea or it's a model, it's a plan. There's market potential. And um, this is also very difficult because we, we work with 65,000 students and more. And at the University of Pretoria, we have a very unique online program for all our students, for free, in entrepreneurship. And for our staff as well, I'm always worried to say that we actually want to retain staff, not get them to start business and leave the place. <laughs> but um, this is probably one of the only universities in Africa offering for free a 10-week program just to create awareness. And that should flow into our ecosystem, support ecosystem, of which Tax Innovation is a leading entity in entrepreneurial support and enablement, especially, especially in the tech space. And, and that will only lead to scalability later on um, if there's access to market and, and finance, which is part of the, the core offering there. Now, lastly, if you look at this campus, it's, it's actually the, a very good metaphor of the entrepreneurial university, the product of that. You see a lot of design thinking and, and creativity that, that was part of the process, yeah. A lot cows. of entrepreneurs. Hmm? And, and you see cows. Yes, yes, cows <laughs> is later. That's a, an agri-entrepreneurial process. Okay. It's coming. Okay. Um, and also a lot of entrepreneurs were involved in physically building this, this, this beautiful campus, also uh, creating jobs. And now it becomes a knowledge machine and uh, shakes uh, leadership, yeah, and it's a transdisciplinary machine. And we will only see the commercialization, or, or rather so innovation, later uh, in terms of market uh, capacity, uh, market exposure and so on. So this is a very good example of what we offer at the uni uh, University of Pretoria in terms of thank, that context. Th thank you, Alex. I, I see that program director standing up already, but I have so <laughs> many more questions still to ask. And I thought that we have um, a few more minutes for question and answer in any case. So if I may continue for a little bit. Um, five minutes. I, I don't know how we're going to do five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to do this when we do the winning participant. And uh, when we have the winning participant, maybe then we'll have a continuation of conversations. But I don't like to, uh, I think as ladies, we want the lady to say something. I, I think so, right? Yeah, I, I think so too. So um, Samantha. <laughs> Samantha, Senior Manager, Alumni Relations, um, talking about staff and talking about students and talking about alumni. 
Um, this is a powerful tool we have here, this a university incubator. But you also sit on a very, very powerful tool as, as well, and that is our alumni, both locally, internationally, whether they are starting big businesses, have big businesses, have their own networks. How do you think that the alumni network contributes to, to, to the incubator, specifically tax innovation, or this particular cross-acceleration program? Thank you so much, and thank for inviting me. I think oftentimes, I just want to start by saying that oftentimes, the, we kind of overlook the importance of the role that alumni plays within partnerships like this, and especially about accelerating entrepreneurship and building a ecosystem where um, entrepreneurship flourish at universities. So thank you so again for inviting us. Um, alumni role is very, very important, because remember, alumni has a very close relationship with this institution. They have gone through, they have the experience of studying here, they have the warm relationship, hopefully a very good experience with the institution, and then they go out to do amazing things in the world. Um, and part of those amazing things is they become industry leaders, they start their own businesses, uh, they become experts, and then what happens to all of that knowledge? Do we invite the knowledge back into the institution to help with these incubators in part of mentorship, um, part of getting them to be guest speakers at some of our, our entrepreneurship series? And then more importantly also, how do we invite them to play a role around access to finance, which oftentimes they have access to. Um, and just to give you two examples, perhaps, is to a recent case studies. So a, a big part of the work that we do in the Alumni Relations Office, um, we work very closely with our Vice Chancellor around the strategic goals of promoting this institution as also the innovative entrepreneurial university. And we definitely strategically seek out alumni that operates within those spaces. Um, so we facilitate meetings between Tax Innovation and some of our alumni that sits in those spaces. Um, so one example, yesterday we had a meeting with Dr. Anton and uh, uh, an individual, individual who heads up a venture capitalist firm and is really willing to invest millions of dollars at incubators that based at universities and so this is really the role as a connector as a facilitator in building partnerships that any alumni relations office can play in the ecosystem of entrepreneurship okay, thank you very much samantha i um I, i'm not sure I, I want to there's a question here for um from the audience and i would like to ask that question of anton if he allows us to because I can't answer this question, I have no idea, so. May I, may I ask you this question, Anton? Are you ready? All right. Um, so, so there's a question from the audience. Unfortunately, I don't know who the audience member is that's asking the question. Might be someone online, might be somebody in the room, but it's a very good question. Most entrepreneurial universities find their strength by being situated in startup cities. And we're talking here, for example, Stanford in San Francisco, I'm sure also MIT, you think about the same thing. With UP not being situated in a startup city, and, and, and uh, Prof. Kupe, I don't know what you're going to say about that, but apparently UP is not situated in a startup city. Um, what do you believe, Anton, the city of Stwani can do to achieve the startup city <laughs> and better support the University of Pretoria? Unfortunately, um, Dan has left, so it's up yeah, to you sure. now to answer that question uh, for us. Yeah, we will have to understand what it means that UP is not a startup city, but it can be a better startup city, I'm sure about that. Somebody said to me the other day that, um, you know, the difference between South Africa and Silicon Valley is you make your startups in Silicon Valley in a coffee shop over a cup of coffee, and you get the agreement and you fund them and you carry on. Um, incubators are much too formal, and it takes too long to do it. That may be true, but I think the, the spirit of a startup is something that is not necessarily uh, related to a city. It's nice to have the culture or the climate of doing that. I believe the young people are startups themselves. They have it in them, they have the entrepreneurial um, fire burning in them, and it just has to be ignited. So, City of Twani is doing a lot on this. City of Twani recently ran, last year, ran a uh, inter-university competition for entrepreneurship. Four of the entrants were from the University of Pretoria. They won prizes, 
and they are now with us in incubation. So we are talking to the city uh, in terms of how we can do this. There's a lot of good planning. City of Tuani has also now linked these uh, winners up to the, not City of Tuani, uh, actually also the uh, intervention of the, the, the French Embassy with what is called the Blue Oceans Award, where this whole new Blue Oceans idea of having businesses that are so unique that you don't have competition, that they can follow that kind of thinking. Um, there's a lot going on, but you can always be better. Thank you, Rose. Thank you very much. Thank you for that answer. Um, and, I, and I think that, um, Prof, would, would I be right in saying that, um, that San Francisco should watch out? The city of Pretoria is the next um, Silicon City. They have been warned. It's official year today. Gator Valley. <laughs> and then we said, but what would the city of Tuani be? And then the suggestion was made Crocodile Valley. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I think that it's Yakaranda Valley. I think it's all about purple flowers. Thank you very much for that. Um, I do have until 10 past. Um, I don't have another question, but I do have uh, my fellow panelists um, um, online, and unfortunately, you are not going to get away with it. I am going to ask you a question. So, um, Dr. Jean Christophe um, Bodhi, you're the research and innovation executive at IMT Lille, Dwai, process engineer, environmental scientist, um, and, and Dwai is between Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, and, and London. So, very, very well placed right in the middle of everything. So, for you, I'd like to ask the question that the commercialization of research and innovation is really what drives university business incubation. So, so, can you tell us in your experience how can international exposure to partnerships and clients, understanding global value chains, et cetera, et cetera, how does that lead to multinational presence? Um. If you don't mind, uh, I will start with uh, an example in, in sports. Uh, when I was in Australia uh, 10 years ago, uh, my, my colleagues tried to, to teach me cricket. Uh, I must admit, I did not uh, understood the rules. Uh, I tried. I tried to understand. I watched games, I went on the fields, and I finally gave up. Uh, and I went back to, to rugby. Uh, what I mean is if you intend to access to, to foreign markets, uh, your product must be, must be in line with what your customers are looking for. Uh, you have to discover, to understand, uh, to be in line with the foreign culture. culture. Um, if you want to, to disseminate your results, uh, you have to ensure they will be adopted. Uh, and still, uh, still making a parallel with sports. Uh, if uh, if a South African startup wants to to hire, uh, let's say, an athlete to help him to grow his business uh, in France, um, it better to hire uh, Sia Corisi rather than Quinton de Kock, for example. And uh, to, to go further in my career, I had the opportunity to work uh, in France, in Australia, in Luxembourg. And I would say the mixing of culture is a very, very uh, fertile melting pot to think out of the box and, and to consider uh, the market uh, through multiple angles. Uh, but you do not have to to forget uh, the country you you intend to to land on uh, has its own culture uh, if i make a comparison between australia and luxembourg in australia innovation is mainly seen as a breakthrough uh, while in luxembourg it's mainly incremental uh, innovation is uh, adopted step by step and trying to be very pushy in Luxembourg uh, it will be a disaster you will fail um, I know that because I made the mistake uh, I did not fully listen and observe the locals uh, I tried to uh, to push my ideas to to develop uh, breakthrough research and it was a uh, it was a total failure so uh, if you try to to develop your uh, your business 
through your own understandings of what the market is, uh, you will not go to, to the top. So, um, I, uh, because I know we are uh, short on time, I just would say that uh, if you want to uh, develop multi multinationalities, um, a multinational presence for your for your business, uh, don't be afraid uh, by multiculturalism and be open-minded. Uh, what is uh, the culture of the country you are uh, you intend to develop your business? Thank, thank you. Um, I really do want to give the audience a chance to ask the questions, although I do have some more of my own. But if I can maybe venture into the next one. Um, question here, and, and Anton, unfortunately, it looks like it's all coming to you. Um, what do all the partners in this collaboration intend to achieve? Now, I can ask you and Patrick, but just to make it um, quicker, if I can ask you to maybe just um, say a few words. What is it that we intend to achieve through this cross-acceleration program? And now we're talking about beyond just economic impact. What is the universities getting out of this? Um, I think Patrick should answer that one for us. A short answer from me. Uh, strong, independent, um, disruptive, young startups that matter anywhere in the world. But Patrick, please, if you can fill in. I love that, thank you. Yeah, okay, That's okay. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Phillips, if you could repeat the question because we had a really hard time uh, to, to, uh, uh, to hear what you are saying uh, for about the last 15 minutes. Oh, my apologies, I have to speak right no, into No, no, it's mind. fine, I, uh, you know, technical, it's Murphy's Law, always. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so if you, if you could just repeat the last question, I, I would be very happy actually to, uh, to answer it. Yeah, and it might very well be the last question, so um, choose your answer very carefully. This is the thing that we will remember. What do all the partners in this collaboration intend to achieve through this cross-acceleration program? And now we're talking about beyond the economic impact. So really, um, Anton has said to us what he believes tax innovation and what UP will achieve through this. Maybe just a final word from you, what IMT will achieve through this. And I, and I think it might be a question that comes from another university who also has the idea or already has their own university-based um, incubator what do we want to achieve beyond just economic impact? What's the benefit to the university? I think for me, it's the, it's the question of, uh, of ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem will be never complete if you don't have uh, an, an international uh, you know, uh, step uh, to, uh, to boost uh, the capabilities and uh, uh, to check to check over markets and and also it's a question of talent so so for me beyond beyond the economic growth uh, in the roadmap of every uh, startup with a certain uh, maturity level because probably we haven't mentioned this so far and that's very important uh, our our cross acceleration program uh, is uh, 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 targets uh, startup that have already uh, access a certain market in their local uh, country and uh, uh, are beyond, of course, the proof of concept. And uh, today, uh, all market, uh, more or less, that you want to, uh, to grasp, uh, they are, uh, they are scat scattered worldwide. And uh, you, you can't imagine any roadmap for a startup without an internationalization step, uh, de definitely it's a question of culture. And, and if I get back, probably to take some more height, if you, if you go back to the 4P, which I'd like to do now, probably as, as, as a final word, if it is a final question, if I have the final word, uh, you go beyond economics. You go, you go beyond, you know, uh, deliverable. Uh, you want to tackle by going international, definitely, because you can't do it only in your country to have such a height, to have such a view, you can't go for people, you can't go for planet, you can't go for prosperity, and you can't go for participating governance if you take such a height. So you will be able beyond uh, economics, beyond deliverables, beyond business model, 
beyond all the features, all what you expect from an excellent startup, uh, you, you want more or less to do that. You, you want uh, to tackle with problems that are borderless and, 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 and want to answer questions. We, we all have that. So that, that's probably the angle and we will contribute to it with, with uh, our, our, our two. And this is why probably we could increase the network. And that's what we try to do. We have other countries that are very interested in, in our cross acceleration program. In, uh, in Israel, for instance, uh, in Japan, in Japan recently, we have a very constructive discussion. So for me, the, the target, and, and you know, the 4P is not, is not from me, it, it's from the World Economic Forum. They change their mind now and they want, of course, to convert the, the economic model we have at, at, at the end of the last century, uh, which was only KPIs driven by the four P's, the four P's driven. So I think that, that that's probably, probably what we can contribute to uh, beyond uh, economics and beyond deliverable. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, Patrick Pazev, I, I know I can't ask you a question, but I just once again want to acknowledge all the work that you have done to bring this partnership together. As I understand it, um, you, uh, you were instrumental in, in allowing for this partnership to happen, and, and might it go from strength to strength. Um, Mr. Kumsa Tabang, I didn't get a chance to ask you a question. Technology transfer offers IP. How important is IP? It's certainly something that we need to continuously watch and make sure that we provide solutions that are at least competitive and does not um, put us in a situation where we are not agile. Anton, you taught me that the first beneficiary is the startup. Um, it's the startup that we want to grow. It's the startup we want to grow into a strong company. You said that we are in incubation because of the startup. Um, a university is mostly thought of as an institution of invention, but Prof, you're saying it's an institution of innovation. And for it to be an institution of innovation, it needs markets, Alex. It needs markets, it needs customers, it needs scale, it needs international cooperation. Our national system of innovation is not an exclusive club. Um, we encourage quadruple helix, as it were, right? We encourage a, a, a helix of startups, of industry, asking industry to join us, um, government and institutions of higher education to collaborate to help the startup develop into what um, we need to do. And we hope that through this acceleration, cross-acceleration program, we also learn what tools there are. France has got quite a bit of tools in their international collaborations already. What tools do we also, as South Africa, develop as we take our continent to the rest of the world and bring the rest of the world to Africa. Thank you very much for participating in the panel. Thank you panelists for sharing your insight and might this collaboration go from strength to strength. Thank you very much. I hand back to you, Program Director. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was really a very, very fascinating panel discussion. I actually was thinking as I was standing there that uh, a few years ago I discovered podcasts. And I'm tempted to propose that I wonder if we could have podcasts of this conversation, series one, series two, because really this conversation is quite critical. And in the interest of time, I know you had two panelists that didn't speak. I wish to give them just 30 seconds each to say one or two sentences to close the thought. Uh, that is for Dr. Patrick Bizet, as well as Tabang. Yeah, please, if you just 30 seconds, say your final word, let it be final and it will be final. And we'll extend the debate to the podcast. Please go ahead. Dr. Pizet, you're on mute. As you want, uh, Tabang, you can start. Uh, okay. okay. Um, thank you for having me. Um, from my side, um, I will comment on the complexity of, 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 um, of IP um, as a final world. Um, 
to circumvent the the the, the complexity um, 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 uh, around IP and also to 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 sort of like uh, reduce the delays to commercialization. Um, when it comes to collaborations, uh, there needs to be um, a, a re research and development uh, collaboration agreements. And these agreements, they capture the, 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 the scope of work, the roles and responsibilities of the parties, the objective, the goals, the timeframes, and also the IP management. And within IP management, they address uh, the IP ownership issues, which can result into a huge conflict. Now, with IP ownership, uh, parties can agree in terms of what contribution they make. And according to that contribution, um, uh, it determines the, 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 the IP ownership and also influ that influences the benefit sharing when it comes to royalties, when the technology has been uh, licensed. So the key is uh, research, uh, research and development uh, 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 collaboration agreements because they circumvent uh, th that, uh, that complexity. Thank you. Thank you, Taban. Thank you very much. Uh, next, okay. I guess Dr. Patrick Bizet. Yeah, so I would like uh, to, to thank uh, everybody. Uh, so we start uh, the collaboration now five years ago with my colleague Nico Wilk and also with Nicoline Govender, who was uh, uh, finishing at that time his uh, thesis at the University of Pretoria. And it's very a great pleasure to see how the cooperation go after five years and to be here at the round table and to, for this event. So. I think that uh, for us uh, is very important to work uh, to have a balanced uh, relationships in order to have long-term uh, collaboration, and um, in, uh, we, we focus our, our energy to focus uh, not much. What is very important for researchers, I think, is not uh, uh, focus. Um, on the about individual interest, but to things to and to push our energy on much, much higher than uh, the research individual interest. And um, for us, I think also um, it, it was very important uh, uh, to have uh, a place uh, uh, as uh, the Campus Future Africa, where we have international students and company inst institutes. And I spent uh, several months as a visiting uh, professor uh, in the place of uh, Future Africa. Is why uh, if this uh, stays in South Africa and uh, was uh, one of the best experience of uh, my research life uh, and and my life, and I would like to thank in particular uh, Daniel Nicola Week. So yes, we start with a classic research relationships, and then we create a link together, and uh, we know very uh, well each other, and we know the family, and uh, we become like uh, brothers. And I think that um, the, the strong relationships was a play a crucial role in order to understand the country and understand uh, the, the both uh, the institute of the University of Pretoria and to make the link. And uh, also I would like to, to thank all the people uh, to bring this pro program and uh, also um, I think so about uh, the support of the French Embassy and also in particular uh, Mathieu Be uh, Bécus with his expertise and friendships also. Uh, was uh, also a necessary element to help understand, understand the economic and the key point issue uh, to encourage and to give us the opportunity to create a link. And if I have just the time for, uh, I think that the, the, the challenge of this program is, uh, from my point of view, is um, uh, the South Africa has a role uh, for entry point into Africa continent. And um, for, for uh, the South Africa uh, has a good infrastructure, good support, and uh, is a more familiar setting from the Europe point of view. And I think that uh, in regarding of uh, Africa and its needs, uh, the French startup could use this cross acceleration program in order to test also for the other country market and uh, after to test, of course, uh, the South African one. So th th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on that note,
We are at the end of our program, and my closing remarks would be that if we recall on the 1st of January, there was the African Free Continental Trade Agreement that was signed. And having listened to the panel, the things they spoke about, they truly speak to how do we lift up and light up Africa. We have to understand the culture. We have to care about the people. There are still people who are going hungry when they go to sleep. UP is one of the universities that has a program that uh, requires of its engineers to go and do service within the society. As humanity advances in technology, one of the things that is missing is the heart of caring about people. And I think technology and startups and innovation combined with the moral fiber of this reactor that the colleagues were talking about, we can certainly build technology that supports the advancement for the benefit of humanity and the planet. On that note, I wish to hand you over for a vote of thanks from our dear colleagues. Uh, we will start with Dr. Patrick Duvaux, followed by Dr. Anton Borta. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It has been really a great honor. Uh, I want to say thank you for uh, the organization uh, which really has been uh, outstanding. Uh, I mean, being able to hold at the same time uh, locally and uh, remotely with uh, such a sharpness and, uh, and live, that, that, that's something really great I want to emphasize. I really uh, thank all the dignities that were here. It's, uh, it's a great honor. And uh, we, are, we are looking forward actually uh, to come over uh, we, we, we had uh, a, an invitation and of course, uh, because of uh, the, the, the COVID, uh, we couldn't make it, uh, but we hope uh, we, we can come probably once uh, we know uh, the, the lower rates the, uh, of uh, the, the winning startup that, that will benefit from the, the acceleration. Uh, it will be really, really great uh, to, uh, to visit all uh, uh, your uh, in incubation sites and uh, and also uh, speak with uh, your, your researchers. Uh, so really, thank thank you again, and uh, uh, it was a great pleasure to be uh, to be here with you today. And uh, uh, we we have good hope that this program uh, we supported today uh, by the embassy uh, uh, that I, I I thank again uh, will become self-sustained. We have uh, we didn't talk about it yet, but uh, we have. Uh, a model uh, with Anton, uh, uh, a business model actually for this program that uh, uh, we leverage uh, the value growth that uh, the startup would benefit from actually uh, to, to put uh, the margin that, that we make back into the program. And uh, as a good entrepreneur, uh, start small, think big. We have only one startup uh, on each country today. And uh, tomorrow uh, we expect to have, uh, to have more. So thank you again. It's a great partner. And uh, we are looking forward uh, to uh, uh, spend time uh, with the startup we're going to select in the coming weeks. Thank you again. You know what, I've, I've just been thinking about it. We've actually achieved the first deliverable of the joint program. We've put something together here, spoke to each other, debated, and we were not in the same country. This is exactly what we want to see happening in terms of people working together. I'm not going to thank any individuals. Patrick Duvo did uh, mention a few people and organizations, and I, I will uh, stand with that. I think it's about teams. Uh, there was the team at IMT and the team at Pretoria University that put this together since January when we spoke the first time. Uh, the DIA team, our tax innovation team, Louis and his team, thank you very much for putting up a splendid technology link for us. Uh, it, it just worked out right for us. It's the team of panel members in France and here with me uh, on the stage that put their minds around these things. These are people that we speak with on a regular basis, not only when we have an event like this, you help us to think about these things. And then so capably managed today, Liahu by yourself, and Rose, thank you very much for getting the conversation going. 
Uh, if we can, we will fall back on you again uh, just to make sure that we also spread the message and that we have these discussions. Uh, Prof. Kupi, thank you very much for uh, uh, supporting us all the way to do this. Prof. Chiop, thank you very much for this nice um, Future Africa facility. Um, our hearts are warm if we can get together like this. And hopefully next time the room will be fuller and we can touch and feel again. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have officially come to the end of our proceedings. Uh, just some notices before we uh, leave. There is some refreshments that uh, we have prepared for you. We would really be honored if you could stay. It's also an opportunity to interact with you and engage with you. Also, there will be a group photo. I stand to be guided as to where the group photo is going to be. Okay, I believe it's going to be here. So before we leave, let us please take the opportunity to, to take the group photo. And from then on, it's uh, for us to meet, exchange uh, ideas if we wish to, as well as exchange contact information. And we will see you on the podcast. I hope we do have a hashtag. Uh, do, do we have, uh, Anton? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> So perhaps we should create one because this is also part of being ambassadorship of this program, especially for me also sitting on the Text Innovation Board. It's really exciting to see young people so passionate. They just need that reactor to accelerate them, you know, and uh, really if we can get more of the word out there, we definitely will make an impact uh, for our country and also the globe at large. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to meet you inside.